So, Marty, you touched on something that I've wanted to talk about for a while, which is, you know, yes, everyone's looking for quality. You know, they want a live stream. And a lot of our customers are integrators. And, you know, they're mm -hmm. going out there. I don't know if you heard about you, – do you know AVI SPL? They – Yes, <laughs> they're they're like one of they're like the if they're not the biggest audiovisual integrator yeah. in America in, in the billions of dollars or at least six or seven eight hundred million dollar business a year company, they're one of the top two or three. They they're just, actually a client of one of our clients. <laughs> so really? That's never heard of. And them, they so. just bought a company up in your area from Boston called VideoLink LLC. Okay. And I think it's it's gonna it's gonna mark a large turning point because I know they spent twenty or thirty million dollars to acquire VideoLink. Uh, they're based in Boston. They've got offices in Boston, Philadelphia, and uh, Washington, and Baltimore. And they set up video productions for people who want high quality video productions. The big guys in the tech industry have always been integrators, audiovisual integrators. You know, the, the broadcast guys are there too, but the two mm -hmm. worlds are merging. The large Whitlocks and AVI SPLs and the big, big audiovisual, you know, nationwide, worldwide companies are starting to find out that their bread and butter, which used to be video conferencing and wireless presentation and all that stuff, it's getting so easy to do. The customers are doing it without them. And right. now they're trying to find something more challenging, something where their customers need to call them and consult with them. And live streaming is providing a great place for them, but they're not exactly sure how to get into it. So they're making acquisitions, small mm -hmm. media companies to add that expertise to their portfolio, take their hundreds of salespeople and say, hey, we've got a broadcasting company now. Tell all your customers they can start live streaming. And they're seeing it happen. It's a huge validation and something that I've been talking about for years. Uh, but one of the things I want to do is I want to help my AV integrators add this service to their portfolio. You know, there's no mm -hmm. reason why a regular audiovisual integrator can't say, hey, I can help you live stream a event. Oh, you're, you're five states away? I'll send you a PTZ Optics and I'll remotely control it from my office. You know, you, I don't have to drive 10 hours to get there. I'll just send you a PTZ Optics, put it on the network and give me a video call. Right? So I want to help people get there, add that service, add that value add. And you've been kind of hitting on that in your own media company. Have you, you, you remotely, you broadcast for other people already as a business, correct? Yes. Uh, a lot of our business, as far as the live shows that we produce, we'll produce for clients. And it, it, we'll, we'll actually bring in both participants and they'll both be in different locations. And lots of times we'll do a tool up like we're doing, like you're doing here, Paul. We'll bring them in. I'll bring them on, on separate machines, mix it all here, switch it all here, and then ship it out to whatever platform they want to go. You know, So I have a whole workflow involved and I can, I can put pieces in, put pieces out. And they love it because they're able to just sit down in front of their, you know, lots of times they're just using a, um, a webcam and a simple microphone on a laptop. And then I send them back the program video and mix minus audio, basically audio minus themselves. And it works great, you know, and they just sit down, they do their thing. They can see the show as be, it's being produced. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I shut it down and they just get off and leave. And then I can either take the archive video, edit it a little bit, post it for them, depending on what they want to do. Uh, but it's just the ease of use for them. And then they just have to concentrate on what they're going to say, their content. And it works great. You know, it takes all the technical out of it because even when you're using WebRTC platforms, that all in one platform, there's still a lot of lot of things that can go, as you know, with live, a lot right. of things go wrong. I don't think people realize just the networking involved, the bandwidth, all the little things that can go wrong with router, all the little technical things that if you don't have it covered or backups ready to go or know what you're doing, you, that's when you run into issues. And live, you can't take it back. You know, so I think that, you know, it's funny. I, I just did some work with um, Pandora, the music service that we were in I New York. I saw that. Yeah, that was that was a great opportunity, and and, was, and thanks to Stephen Haywood, he he was really the conduit for that, um, and and I think I'll be doing some more work with them uh, coming up shortly. I think it's South by Southwest, but but that was a situation where we use Wirecast, and you know again they're not taking any chances, so we had a whole team there, and we're going through the different scenarios, the networking, the cameras. There's a lot of and I, I always call it the 90-10 rule, Paul. I mean, 90% of the work happens before you go on there, and 10% is what we're seeing here. Yeah. And just the prep and, and everything you need to go through. And, and again, when it goes smooth, it looks easy. Like you're, you're showing it. Yeah, you're showing the video there. 
we use Wirecast. It was at a um, converted uh, synagogue in, in lower Manhattan. It was a showcase for John Legend. He had just released his album. Very small showcase, probably about 100 people there. You could see it's, it's small audience. And they were basically taping that for a later broadcast, a later special. And then what Pam Dora wanted to do is they wanted to take the first two songs and stream that to Facebook Live. So uh, that's what my I was I was doing the switching on on Wirecast, but but again, I, I don't think people realize the amount of work it takes to put on a production like that, and the and the level of meticulousness and the detail that you go through the checklist to make sure everything's mm-hmm. working, rehearsal for that ten. We basically broadcast ten minutes, you know, and we went through like four hours worth of setup to make sure everything was. And we had different issues that we were dealing with with cameras, with formats, and all that stuff, and. Luckily, we had that time, you know, that we yeah. could work through all that stuff. And, you know, so, yeah, well, I mean, I it was your pain. It's it's tricky to <laughs> set these things up. They're not it's not easy. And but it is getting yep. easier. I don't know if you saw Facebook actually just released an app where you can just pick a PTZ optics camera as your camera and like a microphone, just two USB sources nice. and live stream them on the desktop. So they're, it's getting easier. But yeah. th- my question for like my audiovisual integrators out there who are thinking about, hey, should I add this as a service, knowing, n- not knowing what you know, you know, not coming from a broadcast television background, maybe they can't do that. Um, but can they sell companies a broadcast studio you know can they put in a camera and a microphone and a green screen for them and allow them to create video content in-house now i know i've heard that happen um it's also it's better when it's not live right what if you're just sitting down in front of a camera and recording a marketing video up i made a mistake try again um so marketing video content in general is businesses need it the demand for it's incredible so there's that approach and then they can use that same wirecast system to go live once they're comfortable so exactly. i was talking to one company enlightened audio visual i want to show the show everybody their approach apparently mm-hmm. they over the past eight months they've as a service live broadcasted 200 streams for customers um so as a service i don't know what they're charging um mm-hmm. but people really want basically to look like we're looking oh you know what sometimes these websites do that look at that oh, the <laughs> we're in the background. Yeah. Um, yeah. but they came up with this idea the brand room and basically mm-hmm. what it is is they're basically selling what a company needs to create branded video content this website's taking forever to load so i'll just wait for it to load there but um it, that's kind of the concept is Can we sell companies the equipment that we used to sell them for video conferencing? This, I can fix this. Um, And now can we, um, you know, sell that as a service or sell it as a complete turnkey solution? Um, And, you know, I mean, I I see a big future in it. That's just why I wanted to kind of bring it up. It's kind of like merging what you're doing as a fully... Uh, managed service and then saying hey would you like to you know buy all the equipment and just have it and maybe maybe they remote you in you know maybe you're still consulting but at least they've got the equipment in-house right yeah i mean uh and i've worked with clients where we've gotten them set up uh maybe with a camera a microphone some lights uh depending on what their need is depending on how frequently they're they're going on and then we'll still bring them in and switch the show and take care of all the distribution part of it. But uh, yeah, I think there's plenty of room for that as far as helping companies, helping brands, helping businesses maybe get set up with a simple studio setup. And you're talking about the green screen. So for example, you know, if we, we could get someone set up with a green screen, I can take their video in and actually do mm-hmm. the key here. Yeah. Uh, so there's all kinds of different scenarios. And I think it's gonna be very, it, it's very individual per client what they want i have clients that that want the full setup that they're not they're not comfortable at all with the technology they'd rather have us handle everything we just set them up with a webcam and a microphone they just sit down do the thing leave and then we handle the archive all the stuff you know the, i'm sure you have other ones that may be a little bit more tech savvy they may want to jump into a little bit more again it's i think it's a very individual piece but i also i think what you're going to see is continual evolution on these tools you know, yeah. and the different technologies, you know. The, and, the other approach I've seen people take is just a consultation only approach. Now, let's, let's take yep. a look at this website here. So this is the live streaming pros. And they came out of mm-hmm. nowhere. I had never heard of them. 
uh, you know, like you guys have been around forever, but these guys are broadcasting every day yep. at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific on Facebook and YouTube, which is not, which is kind of frowned upon. You're not supposed to do that, but they do it anyway. <laughs> um, all they sell is consulting time. Yep. They, they, that's all they do. And, and it's not cheap. I mean, it's like $300 an hour consulting. And mm -hmm. uh, what they want, all they, so that's all they're selling is consulting time. And all they want to do is fly out to your place, wherever it is in the world, and set up your live show for you. I'm sure that costs thousands. But they're making a living doing it. So there's, there's a lot of different angles on how to add service, add value in this extremely booming market. Um, and, I, and over the next few weeks, just for our integrators out there, we're going to be hopefully giving you the tools that you need to enter this market, whether it be you know, flyers where you can brand it and put your own logo on it. Um, we already have all the information on how to control our cameras remotely so you don't have to fly out and, and host an event. You just send them two cameras and a computer and they stream it all back to you, just like you were mentioning, maybe with a green screen. Yep. You know, but uh, the thing I love about the industry is how customized it is, how much there is a need for support and you know people who know what they're doing. It's not like I came from the video conferencing industry, which at one time people needed us. But now mm -hmm. it's so freaking easy to do and it's basically free. Nobody calls anymore saying they have issues with video conferencing. It's just dead simple to do. So, you know, this exactly. is a lot And it's funny you mentioned that, Paul, because uh, that's a great pivot for you guys, right? So, so you know, and I remember those days, too, where you had the dedicated rooms and, and the equipment was ridiculously expensive. You need special connectivity, all kinds of stuff. Now you can do it on a web browser, you know, it's cra or you can do it on your phone, you know. So, it's, so what do you do? And I think that, you know, and I equate it to um, – to uh, chefs or to cooking, right? So famous chefs will put out a cookbook and they'll be very detailed as far as how they do it, right? But you're still not gonna be able to replicate it entirely because there's still the chef that has the ability, to, the skill level, the ability to do it. Same thing with video and I'm sure you're seeing it too as you transition and get into this business is that there's a lot of little tricks, a lot of, and, and this, it just comes with practice, comes with knowledge and skill. And it really depends on what level you want to be at. Can you get started quickly and cheaply? Yeah, absolutely. You need a computer and a, and a browser. You know, you have the built-in webcam. But to step it up, that's where it gets a little more tricky and depending on the level of production. And what's exciting is that there's, six, there's so many different levels, so much demand that, you know, man, I mean, it, and it's funny you bring up those examples. I mean, they're all kind of specializing in different areas. And there's plenty of business out there in each one of those areas depending on what the client wants to do you know so in fact we've got uh you know we're um, there's we've gotten some getting some questions in the chat and digital and i i hope they're okay with me showing their website i want to bring it up they are saying they make millions of dollars a year offering live streaming as a service i'm going to yep. bring up their site it's, everyone pitches it differently but basically it's the same thing it's li so here we are live streaming capture content, webinars, online education. I mean, this is actually one of the more professional examples that I've seen. And yep. my hat's off to you guys because it's, it's, a, it's a growing market. I'm sure, you know, this business is growing. They got client testimonials here. And customers want to go live. They want to look good. And they, they don't want to learn how to do it themselves. Um, so digital, you, you, got, you guys don't even need any help. You guys are, you guys are here. You guys are doing it. And then referrals and then the business just grows. It's um, funny, you, you just mentioned that, uh, you know, a lot of clients don't want to learn how to do it themselves. Uh, we find that in our business. A lot of our clients just kind of, oh, you, you know, here's what we want to do. You guys handle it and make us look good and we're good with that and we'll pay you, yeah. you know, and that's mm -hmm. because it, just, uh, it takes a lot of, it, where's their time best spent? Right. Is it, is it best spent marketing their, their services or products or services or best spent in learning all this technology, which they can just hire someone to get it done right? And they don't and that way they don't have to worry about all the, There's so many things that can go wrong in live streaming. Uh, we've been doing it a lot. And a lot of the folks that you mentioned there doing it a lot. And we all us in the industry, we see all the pitfalls. So we have our we have it down. It's like it's like a mechanic for your car. You can change your own brake pads. Or do you want to bring it to the mechanic and it takes an hour versus a whole day and you could probably still screw it up. You know, I mean, yeah. it may, you know what I mean? Just pay it, get it done right, get it done by a professional and you're, and you're set to go, you know, and then you can operate your business, you know? So it's a very, very exciting time. Uh, I love being a video producer. I mean, I mean, and you're probably seen on your end and everything you mentioned 
there's so many different parts of the of the industry that are moving so fast and so many opportunities that's the exciting part you know yeah yeah because i mean and we had a couple one person's asking me uh, looks like smart t uh av is asking me about the engineering performance term that older video conference and codec companies insist that you still need these old codecs no you don't need them there's no there's no need for these old di dinosaur systems and uh it's a little different in the video production industry. You know, Marty, here's a question I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Tom Sinclair did, and I'm going to call him out because he's a buddy of mine. I'm allowed to do this. <laughs> well, he Tom's had a, great. He's a great guy, but, but he, he goes astray sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> um, so basically he had his top 10 predictions for 2017, and he said it's the year of software. VMix is going to rule, and TriCasters are going to die. The Wirecast gear is going to die. Nobody needs a hardware-based box, and I called him out. I was like, that's not true at all. Um, in the video conferencing industry, yeah, you get a computer, you put Skype on it. But this mm -hmm. is a completely different industry with capture cards and advanced things. And the, 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 for a customer to know they're getting a turnkey streaming solution for $5,000 in a Wirecast gear, that's a lot different than you know the video conferencing codecs literally dying. Cisco had their last codec last year. They're not making them anymore. Polycom yep. doesn't make them anymore. They're just dead. But on the video production side, you know, Wirecast Gear just came out, and I think it's got two or three years. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with you on the on the hardware issue. Uh, in, when, when we were in Germany, I, I have a TriCaster Mini. I use it as my main machine, as my main switcher. But uh, knowing what I had to do out in Germany and knowing the travel distance, I, I decided, well, let me, let me bring my MacBook Pro and Wirecast, and I was going to use two cameras, see if I can do that. And I'll tell you, it, it was even tough. I mean, it, I, I, I was right on the edge with the two camera bandwidth and also mm -hmm. bringing, you know, analog audio in through, through a, a interface. You start getting to the point where you make, you know, the advantage of Wirecast gear and TriCaster is they're very highly optimized, basically computers, but with the capture cards, like you're mentioning, Paul, they have the four capture cards, they have the bandwidth in there. They're specially designed to handle video, handle all the switching, uh, the software on top of that, that that's, you know, again, Wirecast is a software layer on top of it. TriCaster has their own soft layer on top of that. And I'll tell you, if you're a pro and you're using professional equipment, you know, and maybe using four cameras, I mean, you're going to need hardware switcher. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, Tom's, Tom's whole thing was like, hey, I can build you a custom PC for half the price. And, and you know, uh, Blackmagic just came out with a five-port HD SDI 3G capture card for 500 bucks. Wow. One PCIe slot. I mean, so yeah, you can create custom PCs, but your average guy doesn't want to do that. And right. your average audiovisual integrator doesn't even want to do that. We don't want to do that. No, most people don't want to build custom PCs. The value of knowing that you can call new tech tech support or Wirecast tech support with a three-year warranty, you know, if, yeah. especially if it's a money-making situation, you know, exactly. I mean, it's like, I this thing is is like my my livelihood. Like, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I mean, and 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 I'm nothing wrong with Tom Sinclair's custom PCs. I'm running a Tom Sinclair custom PC. That he built me mine. It was five grand, and it's got an octa core. I mean, you can't buy a faster motherboard than what he put in here. Yeah. I have twelve USB 3.0 ports. I have wow. capture cards out the wazoo. <laughs> I love the thing. But I'm just saying the average guy that's in the average company, they're looking out there and they're going to, who are they going to go to? Wirecast? No, they used to go to vMix. They dropped their hardware. They thought that was a smart idea. I'm on the side of saying hardware is a good thing. But it's, it's just been, yeah, it's been an interesting. And, and I think also, I think people forget that, you know, Wirecast gear, TriCaster, you know, and I use TriCaster mainly for my main switcher. There's a marriage between hardware and software. You know, it's very much like Apple. The advantage of Apple, lots of times, is because they make the hardware, they make the software, they can integrate it better than a generic PC. And what Tom's doing, do you know, you can build a very beefy machine, but you're still, it's not quite integrated perfectly. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And for me, if I'm doing it for a business, uh, you know, I, my TriCaster, I, I trust that a little bit more than maybe a custom PC. I mean, there are situations, and the, and again, each situation is different. But uh, there's a lot to be said for, you know, the the company designing the software also designs the hardware. So they know how it all, and also the testing. I mean, you know, on the PC side, when, when Microsoft releases software, 
they have to basically test on thousands of different configurations. I mean, they don't know where their software is being run. Apple has a little bit better situation because they know exactly where it's being run. TriCaster has even better situation because it's run on very limited hardware. So they can test everything out. If you're a pro, you don't need it going down in the middle of a show. You have to have it working. So to me, it's worth the extra expense. You mm-hmm. might be able to shave a little bit doing a custom PC and, and software on top of that. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think there's a, there's a value there with the hardware software combination and getting it all from one company. That's, that's how I go. So, yeah. And I mean, and, and I'm trying to look at it not even from a personalized standpoint where I have a custom PC. I'm just thinking the market in general yep. wants these systems. And I mean, and like you said, people are going to be streaming from their phones. People are going to be streaming from their laptops. Maybe they start with a laptop, you know, yep. and Wirecast, and then they realize that they need something larger. It's just not going to, they're not going to go away. They're, they're just starting. <laughs> right, right. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're in the first inning on, on this whole whole scenario here you know i mean it's very i mean it's just recently got you know inexpensive enough for someone like myself to be able to have the equipment you know to be able to do a tv quality show i'm used to be again millions of dollars i mean i worked at espn i i've seen it you know they still spend millions of dollars on sets on shows on they just build the digital center that was launched two years ago you know 4k ready and all that stuff i mean it's just state-of-the-art and it's millions of dollars, and, and I got a TriCaster Mini, and I'm doing, you know, I can stream 1080p and the whole thing on the internet. I mean, it works pretty well, you know, so it opens up a lot of possibilities. You still need to know what you're doing. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like people that want to get in the graphics and think buying f- Photoshop is just going to solve everything. No, you still got to learn how to use the software and the hardware, but the possibilities are, are there, and it, and it really opens up a lot of doors for people to produce High quality content now. Now I am interested to see what some of these new chipsets are bringing to the table, and it, and it's, it could happen faster than we know. Like I've been testing mm-hmm. the Intel Nooks. I don't know if you've seen those little Intel no, Nook boxes. They're seen like them. five by five. Oh my God, we sell so many of those things. You wouldn't believe the hundreds of thousands of them are going out every year. Not not from me, but hundreds from from our company. And um, they just came out with a new one. It's called the Intel Nook Skull Canyon. And this thing, let me see if I can bring it up here, mm-hmm. um, is super fast. It's $1,000, and it is like the fastest little mini computer you can buy. Um, let, me, let me pull it up here. And I did some testing with it, and I was streaming two cameras in 1080p and recording in 1080p, and it wasn't skipping a beat. This thing's 1000 bucks. I put a wow. copy of vmix on there vmix is you know streamingmedia.com said it's about eh, five or ten percent more efficient than than wirecast that i didn't mm-hmm. do that test that's what that's what streamingmedia.com said so i put it on there i did some testing two usb 1080p cameras gigabit network two monitors two digital video outputs i had a video conference person on there and i was running my live show that we do here on this uh, it's got a built-in graphics card i7 uh and it was running the show and i was like this is an off the shelf thousand dollar computer that's running this show that you're seeing here like no without a problem and recording it and streaming it and video conferencing running two monitors so i wouldn't be surprised if i mean i know for a fact that the live streaming market and people do it yourselfers is growing very fast i'm just saying that the hardware guys I don't think they're going to see their business decline as a result because there's just so many new entrants to the market that all boats are rising. Uh, I would agree with that. I mean, just to, you know, and also it's getting less, I think the key is more capability at less cost, right? So Mm -hmm. you're, I mean, you still got to know what you're getting, still got to know what you're doing, but the tools are becoming more in reach of more people wanting to do this, right? So, you know, you, 10 years ago, I would never be able to dream to be able to do the quality that I'm able to do and even be able to afford it. I mean, my TriCaster Mini is $6,000 and it has everything I need, you know, including four HDMI inputs, uh, analog in uh, audio, and I'm able to do everything I need there and all the software is there. Uh, that would be unheard of 10 years ago, completely unheard. And I'm able to stream right from the same box and record at the same time as well. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know? know? So that's, and that's just, it's just starting, you know? So those machines you showed, I mean, that's really going to be the trend. I think 
the opportunity for these, I think the marriage of hardware and software, I think that's where a, a big opportunity is because you still, and because they're going to push the limits of the hardware, you know, as soon as that, you know, and, and you're going to want to do it. And, you know, I think one of the big mistakes people make when they first get into this is they tend to use underpowered hardware. Yes. You know, they, they, they try to put it on like a five-year-old laptop and they wonder why it stutters. And well, you just, you need, need some horsepower. I mean, you're do, you're pushing a lot of pixels. You're doing a lot of stuff there, you know? So, and depending on how compressed you want, I mean, if you want to do HD, it's still, I mean, it's amazing we can do it, but you still need the horsepower to do it, so. Yeah, and Digitel, who does this for a living, is just mentioning in the chat room, they're looking for the perfect marriage of reliability, dependability, and cost. And so yeah. whether, and that's kind of where this whole integrator, you know, people professional, you know, I'm still out there looking for the guy. And I think when I showed you that brand room, I think they're kind of on the right pitch because people will pay a premium for this stuff is mm -hmm. how do you get a package that you can deliver to a customer that has a camera, a microphone, turnkey, everything and training, you know, so they can use it on their own. You know, how do you find that perfect marriage of products? service if it's needed support all of those things it's a huge market and i i know we're going to see people coming out someone's going to do it i you know i haven't seen anyone really come out like tom making his custom pcs yeah that's just one custom pc for one custom person i want to see somebody go out there with a full live streaming package and be like here put this in your room we'll support you we'll show you how it works and right. the person that can figure that out and sell one to every person in corporate america is going to make a ton of money no I would agree. I, you know, and, uh, you know, it's funny because I, I, I tell you in our business, we do, we do bits and pieces of that, you know, and we have plenty of business, you know, and, and the demand is going to continue to rise. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you can have all the equipment you want. I think the, the, the guidance has to be there. The training has to be there. Um, there, there's a lot of things, you know, we, we talked about Stephen Haywood and his shows and, I consider him the gold standard as far as, you know, online broadcasters, you know, and his journey of being 10 years, he started with a webcam. I started, you know, I, I started with a webcam and yeah. learn and putting that time in. And, and we say that I can, that's the value of hiring the professional to come in and help you. And I think having modest expectations too, if you're, if you're looking for kind of a turnkey solution, just make sure you have modest expectations. You're starting out, basically just want to get a good clean video stream out good clean audio out that's a good first step do that then everything else is gravy after that and you can build on from there but but i think a lot of people i think where they may may go a little astray is they i think they try to bite off more than they can chew mm -hmm. instead of just taking care of the basics first yep. you know when i work with people i say well let's just get you you know i i i, I promote one of the microphones i use is this uh atr 2005 atr 2100 it's a usb microphone and it's plug and play, very inexpensive. Marty, and I think we have to pick this up on. If you can make it from on Monday on Facebook, we have to pick this up. We're at 58, 59 minutes, and if I go a minute over on YouTube, I'm not going to be able to chop out the the intro. I, we could no talk problem. about this for so long. Such an interesting <laughs> topic. I would love to have you on on Monday if you can, guys. We're we're, we're gonna. This seems like a really interesting topic. We're gonna pick this up on Monday on the Facebook Live. Marty may or may not be able to make it. I'd love to have you. I'm and I'm gonna try. Wonderful. I'm going to run the credits. I got to stop it or else we'll go over an hour. Thank you so much, Marty. Uh, it's so annoying that YouTube does that. Yeah, that's right. Because, I mean, we were really getting into it. I mean, this is what people want to know about. All right, I got to cut it. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba.